Well, good morning. It's Thursday the 30th of April and our thought for the day. I wonder if you are like me and can easily think of times when you've done something really bad, when you've said something you shouldn't have said, or when you've thought something you shouldn't have thought. And when you think those thoughts, you feel despair. Well, this may be the psalm for you. Psalm 51, a psalm written by David in response to his being called out by Nathan the priest that we read of in the second book of Samuel chapters 11 and 12. Nathan makes David see that he has not only committed adultery, but followed it up with cold-blooded murder. Under the covenant law given to the Israelite people by the Lord through Moses, David had committed two of the sins for which there were no sacrifice offerings, no atonement. The only course was death. There was no way out, no place for forgiveness, and what's more, David had knowingly chosen to commit both of those sins. But this is the same David that God had chosen and anointed to be the king over Israel when the people had asked for a king. He is described by Samuel in the first book of Samuel as a man after God's own heart. So David, a man whom the Lord had chosen, is one who has fallen far from the Lord his laws and his ways, and is in a really desperate place. When confronted by Nathan, David begins his psalm, his confession. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. David realises that he has no place to go nowhere to hide. The only thing that he can do is throw himself on the mercy of God, on the never-ending, never-failing love of God. This is the covenant love of the Lord, the Hesed. Unlike the Israelites and me and you, God's love is an unshakable, faithful love that never fails. And the word that David uses for mercy in verse 1, it comes from the same root as the word womb, and it seems like David is appealing to the mother love of God, that overwhelming, compassionate love that a mother has for a child that she has born. But David continues in verses 2 to 5, asking to be washed and cleansed from his sin. He knows how deeply embedded his sinful nature is within him, even from before birth. It seems as though he is feeling utterly filthy in the sight of God. What I find interesting is that unlike me, he makes no attempt to justify his actions. He gives no reason for what he has done and he does not want to justify his sinfulness. What he does do, however, is justify the Lord's right to judge him. David knows that it is to the Lord he must confess and to the Lord he must come to for forgiveness. He knows that the forgiveness he needs is found nowhere else. And as the psalm progresses in verses 6 to 9, David asks once again to be washed clean, to be washed whiter than snow. David, David is being asked to be renewed to a place where he can once again worship his Lord. Cleanse me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. David is asking to be transformed, to be made new. It's almost as though he is asking to be born again, to be given a fresh start, a clean slate. So how does this psalm help us? Well remember our psalmist David, a man after God's own heart, yet a man who had committed the worst sins in the eyes of the Lord. Yet he knew that God in his mercy, his love and compassion would forgive because God's love never fails. And this was before the birth of Jesus. 
How much more can we, in knowing Jesus, how much more can we know forgiveness from the Lord for whatever we have done wrong, however bad that has been? And in knowing that forgiveness, from crying out to the Lord, in asking for his unshakable faithful love and saying yes to him, we can experience the joy and the gladness of worshipping him. Knowing that Jesus died for me, for us, that in death Jesus carried my sins, all of them, and then rose from the dead, I can know reconciliation with the Lord. I can be transformed. I can stand in awe of the, before the Lord. So if you are feeling in a place that is far from the Lord, then call out to that unfailing love as David did. Use his words. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. And may you, like David, know that never-ending, never-failing hesed love of Jesus. <laughs>